Hello, South Fork family. I'm coming to you once again for our Wednesday night Bible study video. I um, want to just continue to reminding you that this is a season where we can dig into God's word. We don't have to be in the same place together, but we can continue to dig into this word uh, because God's spirit is behind it, empowering it. And, and so wherever you are, uh, the reading of this word has power. And so we want to invite you just to take this time in this uh, video series, get connected, to get connected to God, to get connected to the purpose of your life, and ultimately to get connected to the body of Christ. Because uh, it's when we uh, experience this connection that we live out the, the calling that God has for each and every one of us. So I just pray that this video and the other videos will help you to continue growing spiritually and to follow Jesus uh, through his example. So let's uh, take some time to get connected today to, through the word to God. And then just to remind you, if you haven't at this point, uh, to, to stay connected to the church through this uh, YouTube channel that South Fork has. Uh, it'll keep you updated about uh, and notified about uh, things that are going on and um, these videos and other videos as well so that you can uh, continue to be a part of the community even though uh, we're, we're still in some ways apart. So I just invite you to, to continue to be connected because this is a time where it would be easy to be disconnected and to kind of wander off on our own. But uh, I do believe that this word in God's spirit, it, it grounds us in a greater reality. So I just invite you to get connected to that through this time. Uh, so with that, we want to look at our uh, message for today. It's the call to discipleship and the mission of God. We we looked at Sunday, on Sunday morning, the, the four chairs and uh, specifically the call that Jesus offers to his first disciples uh, as he is saying, you know, follow me and, and what happens in that process, those four chairs. Uh, I, I didn't come up with that originally. That's actually from a pastor uh, by the name of Dan Spader, uh, and he wrote a book called Four Chair Discipleship. And it just helps us to understand where we're sitting. And when we understand where we sit as disciples, we can understand how God is inviting us to move and what that looks like. And um, I want to take some time to, to look a little bit more at that fourth chair. That's the reason I, this is the, the call to discipleship and the mission of God, because I believe that we can misunderstand the idea of the mission of God. And I want to uh, take some time to pay attention to that. And so uh, just... Uh, we we want to live that missional, intentional life that, that God uses and that builds uh, God's kingdom here on earth. And so as we begin, I just want you to take a moment uh, to think about what difference does following Jesus make in how we live? Does it change how, how we approach life, how we approach our relationships? Or uh, when, when we said we believe in Jesus and we pray to prayer, uh, we, we had this uh, just change that happened in, in heaven or was it really a change that God is starting to, to work out in us in uh, time and in our lives? So um, that's what we want to pay attention to whenever we think about living a missional life for God, that we want to be intentional about how we interact with others, how we interact with our neighbors, our coworkers, our families, uh, because God uh, works in us to, to make a difference in our world, but he does it first uh, in us and then he does it through us. So just uh, think for yourself. What difference has following Jesus made in your own life? Maybe you could uh, think back in your own story and, and ways that you've seen how you've changed as you've uh, been following Jesus to this point. Uh, but this is such an important part. Uh, and, and honestly, there are so many books that have been written about this idea of the mission of the church, the mission of God. And um, I, I still remember our, uh, a Christian mission professor from, from Campbell Divinity, uh, not a Christian. He was uh, the, the professor that we had there. And he, he said, there's only one mission, and that's the mission of God. And if we're not on the mission of God, uh, then, then we need to change because we're, we're missing the point. And so this is why it's important. If we miss out on the mission of God, we've, we've gone our, on our own path. And so uh, I believe that as we pay attention to this mission, to the call to follow Jesus, uh, we, we get back to what God is calling us to be. And as we are faithful to uh, being the people God has called us to be, uh, we see our world change. And so I just want to uh, show these were the, the four chairs that we had there on Sunday. As we look at that scripture, uh, specifically Matthew 4 is verse 19. And also, as we, we learned, that first one comes from, from John, the first interaction that Jesus has with Andrew. But this is that second one uh, that he has in, in 419. So that come and see, it's just, it is this invitation uh, that Jesus offers to 
these first disciples. He invites them to come and to spend time with him, spend the day, uh, learn about him, learn who he is, uh, and then uh, make a decision. Are you, are you going to follow him? I mean, we come to that second one, follow after me, uh, following the pattern to be in a relationship with him that, that changes us, uh, that changes how we walk and how we live. And then we, we enter that hard phase, as I talked about Sunday, that transformation phase uh, where, where Jesus takes our life. He takes our attitudes, our actions, our habits, our, our personality even, and, and he transforms us to be more like himself. Uh, so, so God is about a work to, to, to bring about his own image inside of us. And so that's where uh, the commitment that we have to make at that point is to stay because it, it would be easy to say, you know, this is hard and it is hard. It is a difficult, uh, it's a, it, just imagine a surgery where God is taking out the old heart and the, the flesh that would lead us on our own path, and he is trying to replace it with his heart and, and with a, a spirit that is faithful and willing to do whatever he's calling us to do. And then that last one, to fish uh, for people, this idea of the mission of God, and this is where we want to sit for today, and the mission of God. So Jesus says, come, follow me. And I will send you out to fish for people. And that send is uh, really the word make. So it's, it's just this idea that Jesus wants to do something in our lives. And that is that we would join him in his work. So that process invitation and the invitation to come, the, the, the relationship that we're in relationship. And then the place where God transforms us as we dwell with him, as we spend time with him. Uh, he changes our hearts. And then finally that mission. And we want to pay attention to the mission of God. And that idea is, is brought out here as Jesus tells these first disciples that they're going to fish for people. And, and what's going on is that Jesus is using uh, language that's associated with those first disciples. He is taking something that they're already used to, an image and a lifestyle that they're already a part of. He's not trying to say, all right, you're going to do something completely different. He's trying to redirect their lives and use the skills that they already have to help them join in what God is trying to do in our world. It's not that um, when, when you become a believer, when you decide to follow Jesus, he's saying you have to go into vocational ministry or, or you have to be a missionary that goes uh, to another part of the world. But uh, you can join in with the mission of God right where you are. It's about redirecting our lives to, to work for God's kingdom that Jesus is telling these first disciples they are going to fish for people. He's saying that what you're going to do is going to be about bringing other people in to God's kingdom. And so being a part of the mission of God means that we learn to live beyond ourselves. It means we learn to, to live and to uh, look beyond ourselves, that there are other people that we are going to start uh, bringing in, and we're going to help them see God's kingdom, not because of anything that's in us, but because uh, we want to invite them to the place where true abundant life is, and that is with God and in God's kingdom. We live in such a way that is for the good of other people. I mean, I think about a, a fisherman. A fisherman has to actually take and, and, and put out bait. It has to be something that is attractive to a fish. I mean, you're, you're, you're not going to throw out candy and it be something that a fish necessarily wants. But if you f do food that a fish would actually want to eat, uh, then that is, is um, something that would draw them in and bring them in. And so our lives, is, as, as we commit to this process of uh, following the invitation of Christ to be with him and to develop that relationship and to be transformed, our lives become the actual, uh, I don't want to use the word bait, but that's just the, the word that a fisherman would use. It, it becomes this, uh, this, this powerful witness uh, that, will draw other people in and, and help them to see what a difference it made. And so the first task for us, if we're going to be in the mission of God and be about the mission of God, is for us first to be transformed, that other people would look at our lives and they would want the things that we have. The relationship that we have with God is meant to be uh, what we use to fish for people. It, it's not that we create all these structures and systems and we have programs at church, but our lives are the first and biggest testimony that we give to the kingdom of God. So this is how we join in the mission of God is that we allow ourselves first to go into this process of discipleship that we say, we say, yes, Jesus, I'm going to follow you. I want to be in that relationship with you. I want to grow and I want to do the things that you did. I mean, and part of doing the things that Jesus did is that at some point we have to move into the process of discipling others. 
when, when we stop short at any place, we, we miss out on the blessings that God is calling us to. And sometimes we, we might feel like we're, we're not equipped. We, we weren't discipled the way we think we should have been. Uh, we, we feel like we're not enough. And, and the reality is we're not enough. But Jesus Christ is saying that in those places, I'm going to be enough. I'm going to come and I'm going to work in your relationships. I'm going to be the one that empowers your mission. I'm going to be the or empowers the mission that I want to do and to make the difference in your life. And so we are, are learning in all times in all of these different ways to, to trust God and to trust what he is doing, that he is empowering us to do what he has called us to do. We're, we're not in this alone. As we join in the mission of God, we, uh, we're not just thrown out into the water. And that's one of the images I, I thought about, like with, with this whole idea is the idea uh, of a pool. Imagine uh, that you have a pool and, and you uh, are, are invited to come and see it, but the pool is not just meant to be seen. We can, we can take and uh, dip our toes or our feet in and fill the water and uh, go a little bit more. And as we go into this process, to be in the mission of God is not just to, to look at a pool, but it's, it's to say, I'm going to be fully in what God is, is doing in the world and what God is doing in my life. And so a pool is not meant to just be looked at or to put our feet in. It's meant to be uh, for us to get in and swim in it and enjoy it and, and live out uh, the, the fullness that's available there. And so I just want to invite you to think about the mission of God for today. God is inviting us, every single believer, every single person that says, I'm going to follow you, Jesus. He's inviting us to take our skills, to take the experiences, both the, the good experiences and also the painful experiences, God uses those as well. He doesn't waste what's happened in our life to, to take our energies, to take our hopes and our dreams, to take everything that is a, a part of who we are. And he uses them to build his kingdom here on earth. He uses us. He uses what has taken place and what he has gifted us as being able to do to build his kingdom. And so when Jesus says to his first disciples uh, that he's going to send them out to fish, for people, he's telling them that he's going to use their energies for the good of other people so that they too might be brought in to experience the kingdom of God. And that's the same thing for us, that God wants to take your skills, to take your energies, to take your gifts and use them to build the kingdom of God. It's not something that's limited to a certain few, but it's every person that would say, I want to follow you, Jesus. I want to be your disciple. I want to accomplish your mission here on earth. And so the mission of God is being fulfilled uh, when we invite other people, when we start that process. Jesus uh, did that, uh, started that process with us. Uh, maybe, maybe it was a, a mother, a grandmother, a father, a grandfather, an aunt, an uncle, someone in your life that invited you to come and be a part of uh, the fellowship of believers. And in that, you, you experience the invitation to, to start becoming a disciple. Uh, the mission of God is fulfilled whenever we start to enter in that process and start to bring others along. So we want to invite others to this, this process to, to, to come. It's evangelism. It's living a life that is, is a good life that people, they, they, they desire what we have in our faith. They desire uh, to, to, to experience that freedom that we claim to have as believers, to, to be in relationship with God, to be transformed by God, and ultimately that they will, will then at some point begin joining in the mission of God to, to make disciples. I mean, this you go to the end of Matthew, uh, to Matthew 28, to the Great Commission. We didn't look at it. It wasn't that long ago uh, that we actually were studying that, but we pay attention to it. The last command Jesus leaves is to go make disciples. And it's not the go part because that uh, in, in the Greek there, it's, it's not a command to go. It's a command to make disciples. I mean, this is the last thing Jesus left for his disciples to do is that they would make disciples. And so uh, I think it's just so beautiful whenever we jump back over to our scripture for today. Going on from there, uh, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left their boat and, and their father and followed him. So both sets of brothers that were working and doing the things that uh, they, they knew to do, uh, they, they both responded with obedience and urgency. I love that it says immediately. And, and I think that we, we need that heart uh, in us, church, 
We need that heart that is uh, believing in the urgency of uh, what Jesus is calling us to as disciples. This process, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Are we being obedient? Are we believing in the urgency of Jesus' call to be disciples? Um, because if we're not, we've missed something and we need to go back. We need to pay attention to what Jesus is wanting to do in our lives and how he is wanting to use us to fulfill his kingdom here on earth to build his kingdom, which is, is meant for the good of all humanity. It's not meant for a certain few. It's not meant for the ones that just come inside the church on Sunday morning or join online. It is meant for every single person to experience the goodness of God's kingdom as it comes from heaven to earth because we are living out this call as disciples. So I just want to take some time to pray for you today, to pray uh, for the church, because we are, we are in a moment historically that we need to believe and trust that God is at work, that God is calling disciples today. He is calling people uh, that they may have been in church for a long time, but he is saying, you know, I need you to take another step. I need you to start moving towards me, not just trusting in a prayer that you prayed, but, but to trust in me and what I want to do in you today, uh, because this is about joining in what God is still doing, uh, because God is still at work, and, and I believe that God's still at work in you. So I want to pray for you today. God, we, we want to give you thanks uh, that you still offer the call to follow you uh, Lord, we acknowledge that uh, the call is a gift of grace, that uh, not a single one of us deserve to be called to follow after you, but it is uh, simply grace that says that we can follow. Uh, Lord, it's also grace that uh, keeps us in that place. Lord, it's grace that says that uh, I don't want you to remain the same, but I want you to be transformed. And Paul tells us by the renewing of our minds. Lord, I pray that for your church, you would renew our minds and I acknowledge that this is a moment where we need that renewal of our minds. Uh, there are so many different uh, forces that are all around us, so many different things that the news is talking about, so many different crises that are taking place. We need to renew our minds so that we are focusing upon you. Uh, because when we focus on you and what you're doing in our world, uh, Lord, we acknowledge that you will empower us to the task. You will be with us. Uh, so God, I pray for your disciples. Uh, Lord, the, the ones that are a part of uh, the community at South Fork, but, but also even more, Lord, your disciples throughout the earth, I pray that you would empower them to, to continue following after you and, and then to join in with the mission that you have at work in the world, that, that we would feel the urgency uh, for other people to come in and experience forgiveness and freedom from sins, that they, they would also experience the transformation to, to be remade into the image of Christ, and that we would join in with your kingdom and the mission that you are still about in our world, Lord. Uh, the mission did not end when Jesus left earth, but uh, you left us with a mission that we too might join you in making disciples, that we would follow the habits and patterns of Jesus, and we would teach others to do the same as well. So God, I pray you, you would empower us uh, and you would help us to live out uh, the fullness of your kingdom in our lives as we uh, follow your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Church family, I just want to reiterate like I have every other week, um, just because I, I realize it's an important uh, phrase, and I don't just say it in a, in a trite fashion, but I hope that you know and feel uh, that, that God loves you and I love you. Uh, and I look forward to, to the times that we have together uh, in, in the future, in the near future. Um, but uh, just know that you are loved by God and, and he, he has good plans for you and he wants to use you to join in his mission. So I love you, church family. I'll see you soon.